Welcome to this service of Choral Evensong. It is the initiative of an extraordinary group of cathedral choral scholars based in the southwest. Unable to sing for the last few months in their cathedral choirs, they have gathered together scholars from eight cathedrals and created this beautifully reflective service in aid of the Cathedral Choir's Emergency Fund. The fund is giving desperately needed support to cathedral choirs as they attempt to return in the autumn to some form of sung worship. As we evidence in this service, our world-renowned choral tradition is a jewel in the crown, one that must not only survive, but evolve and flourish. Should you wish to make a donation, details will be found on our Cathedral Choir's Just Giving page. The scholars would like me to thank on their behalf the generous contributions made to this service by Alexander Armstrong and Katie Derham as readers, to Paul Miller for the introit we've just heard, a setting composed specially for this service, and to Roxana Ponufnik for her setting of a text which must surely speak to the hearts of us all, but especially of the thousands of singers who look forward to the time when they may sing together once more. Let all the world in every corner sing, My God and King. O Lord of the Lies, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning. Beginning is 
reading from the prophecy of Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, ye mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Here ends the reading. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth rejoice in God my Saviour. For
Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Here endeth the lesson. Thank you.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Amen. 
Satan, O darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The choir now sings an anthem specially commissioned and composed for this service of online evensong. The text is by the 17th century English priest and poet George Herbert, and it's set by the contemporary British composer Roxana Punofnik. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
Let us pray. We pray for those who've been directly affected by the coronavirus pandemic, for those who have died, for those in mourning, for those who are currently suffering with COVID-19, for those who care for us, for medical staffs and care workers, for those facing economic difficulty and an uncertain future, for those making decisions about the ease of lockdown. Loving God, source of healing and comfort, fill us with your grace, that the sick may be made whole, that those who care for us may be strengthened, that the anxious may be calmed, and those most vulnerable be protected in the power of the Spirit, in the faith of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We offer our fears and our anxieties, as well as our humility, in the face of a loving God who shows us through infinite acts of human kindness the love that unites and which casts out all fear. Ever-present God, be with us in our isolation, be close to us in our distancing, be healing in our sickness, be joy in our sadness, be light in our darkness, be wisdom in our confusion, be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar, that as the doors reopen, we may with the zeal of Pentecost inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness to an emerging world. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And we commit ourselves afresh to our loving and compassionate God, who leads us through the joys and sadnesses of this earthly life, to the glory of his heavenly habitation, where we will dwell with him for ever. Bring us, O Lord God, at our last awakening, into the house and gate of heaven, to enter into that gate and dwell in that house, where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling, but one equal light, no noise nor silence, but one equal music, no fears nor hopes, but one equal possession no ends nor beginnings, but one equal eternity. In the habitations of thy majesty and glory, world without end. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Oh, my Lord, be with you.